special thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to this week's video. I'm still a little bit monstered up. These are different plants from the last video, sort of. But today I've got a plant update for you. And I actually have a couple of questions because I need some advice on some stuff. So if you are into your begonia, please stay tuned because I need some advice. So anyway, before we start, my merch is linked down in the description. This is my new merch, modeled by yours truly. Also, we still have these products. You can't actually see them. You can't see them because it's framed for another video. But I have some other products here that have released on Nurch System. Unofficially, yes, I know you haven't had the launch video yet, but they're available on Amazon. This is my pawn. It says it's in a two liter bag, but technically there's about two and a half liters in there, just so you know. Long story. I also have obviously my Nurture System number one on Amazon. And I also have, I can't pick them all up, but I have two, three, four, and five as well. Three and four are not available on Amazon yet. I don't know why they're being held up, but if you'd like to buy those, they are available through the Nurture System website. Anyway, on to the video, short and sweet. So, I have an array of updates. An array of updates. Let's just get straight into it. So, first one, first one. I just have to show you this. Now, I did put this on my Instagram. I know, I did, but I have to show you in person because it's really, really good. And I'm so happy with this. I am desperate to repot it, but for reasons I can't tell you about, I need to keep it like this just a little bit longer before I do. This is, I believe it's Homolamina rubescens variegated. It is the only plant I have. That's sort of the truth, actually. I have some reverted versions of it. Basically, I've just kind of learned that if I don't cut it and I leave it, it's fine. Whenever I chop it, it seems to revert. Not having a great time. But this one has remained quite beautiful. Now, it was a little bit more pink than what it is now. It has kind of... I don't know, it's kind of died down a little bit on the old leaves, but it's still very, very beautiful. It's almost like a pinky caramel marble kind of tone. It's not like super pink anymore. Don't know if that's a heat related thing or what. The new leaf that's coming in, probably can't see, but it is giving me some, some variegation coming in. So I'm really, really, really pleased about that. I've got some weeds growing in the bottom there. That's very, very silly. It's got a little bit of algae on the bottom of it because that's just how it grows. Again, I've just not touched it. I'm scared to touch it. I don't want to cut it. I don't do anything. Roots look really, really strong. It's actually given me some new ones down here at the base. Can you see? Sorry, I have a table in front of me that you can't see. So hopefully I can get close enough. But it's a very, very gorgeous plant. It's actually one of my favorites in the shop right now. It's not a favorites video, but this one is definitely up there. That and along with, I guess, a couple of the mints I have, but I'll probably pick that up in a bit. I wasn't officially going to update you on it, but it's here in me as well. So yeah, that's him. Homolamina rubescence variegated. Absolutely amazing. No idea what they're worth. No idea if anybody wants them. This is just, it's probably my personal specimen actually, because I do quite like it. And it's the only homolamina I have really. So I'm going to keep him. I really, really enjoy him. I'm going to pot them up very, very soon. Literally two, three weeks, something like that. He will be potted up and you will, you will see him again, guys. I'm not saying anything else. Oh, I should probably take a thumbnail one with this because this is super cute. Oh, such a pretty plant. Such a pretty plant. Right. The next thing I want to update you on, just because I do every now and again, I like to pull them out and update you on them, but I'm going to. So this here is a plant that I just, I literally, guys, I can't stop raving about this plant. I can't. And I don't think I ever will because he's so cool. One minute, actually, because I'm putting crap all over the table and I would rather at least absorb it for a little bit. Hang on. Two minutes. This here is my Microsorum Thailandicum, also known as, as a blue oil fern. I can't get my words out today. I wanted to update you on them because I think everyone loves them. I do sell these in the shop. However, I have actually kind of noticed something. And I've listed this guy right here on the shop. I don't think he's sold yet as of recording this video. But there's something really weird about this specimen specifically that just seems to be a bit different from the other Thailandicum. Now, I'm not saying the other ones I have can't get as blue. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying this one seems to have no problem at all. And it is in the same growing conditions, guys. You've got to remember this. So I've actually got... This is a little offcut of him. Offcut, you know what I mean, like a pop, you know, a section of him that I've started growing out. And I'm putting him on the shop because he's already, I don't know if you can tell or not, he's already super, super blue. If anyone wants to know, I've had this mother plant for like, oh, I don't know, three years, maybe more. And I absolutely, I'm obsessed with him. He does need potted into an actual pot soon. And I think I'd like to take him to my house. I just kind of need the right size pot. He's growing in pond. Um, this one's actually in Lekka, but it's doing the same stuff. It's going super blue. Obviously, leaves come out a little bit greeny first, and then they change. So this one does have some new leaves shooting up here. Hopefully, you can see past my face. 
doesn't seem to want to focus that well apologies guys but hopefully you can see it does come through green but then it turns super super blue so i want to update you on him because i know i do periodically <laughs> so that's him he's not the kind of plant that's gonna grow super big necessarily this one's just kind of bushing out more and i'm really happy with that they do actually get i don't know what you would call them i don't know what you'd call them i have no experience in that but the ends of the leaves end up with these like snake tongues on them and all my big ones have them a lot of them a lot of them a lot of them but this one's only just started to there's actually a leaf that's come through again you probably can't see in front of my hand there they grow a little kind of like snake tongue on them now that will have a proper name I just don't know what the name is for that. I don't know what that process is called. So if you actually know, let me know in the comments because I'm kind of clueless. That's not really... Although I love ferns, I don't actually have any of them right now apart from this guy here. So he is the love of my life. I love him very much. But I wanted to update you on him. And obviously there's the little blue guy as well that is directly from this. So this is the mother. And he's just... Oh, he's so cool. This one grows quite fast as well. Now, don't get me wrong. For this plant, it's, it's a slow plant, but it's... It's not bad, you know, and it keeps the blue. The blue's not fading. No camera trickery, by the way. That is le blue. That is how blue the plant is. I'm going to put him down because he's peed water all over my table. No doubt they all will. Right, the next plant I want to show you because I put him on my Instagram and everyone said to me, oh, this isn't a straightforward VGI. It's obviously a hybrid with like Chamberlainii or something. And I beg to differ, guys. I beg to differ. So I fed this. This was like a stump on like a top shelf of my shop, right? That I hadn't got to. It was a bit neglected. It was just a dried up stump. So I found it. I brought it down. I watered it. I fed it for a bit. It's given me this. But it stayed like that, guys. That's hardened off now. This isn't a new leaf or anything. I'll show you up to the camera. And he's just stayed really brown. Now, as unusual as that may seem, I actually think I saw on Facebook, literally it was either yesterday or today, I saw someone else basically have this same thing. And I'm pretty sure theirs was pure vitriol. So I don't know what's really causing this colouring. I wouldn't say it was heat. I don't suppose the unit's been that hot. Early 20s maximum, maybe like 23, 24 degrees Celsius. So it's warm, but it's nothing over the top, if you know what I mean. But I'm not so sure he's going to go green anytime soon. And if he does, it's clearly going to be very dark green. And it's going to happen very, very slowly. So I wanted to show you that. Obviously, I'll be waiting on a new leaf to see if it does the same thing. I do have more beachy. I've got one. You can't see him. He's off camera. I've shown you him before. Um, he has a flower at the minute. He's just sat on the top of all my plants. And he is not doing that. But I can't actually remember what he does when he does produce a new leaf. So I'll keep an eye on that. I'll keep an eye on that. And I will let you know what occurs because... I'm in for the ride, guys. I'm in for the ride. Hold that thought. I'd like to talk about Squarespace, the sponsor of today's video. If you're looking to create and manage your own website online, then Squarespace might be exactly what you're looking for. There is a selection of really useful and cool looking templates, and you can customize them so easily and make them your own. Let's really quickly make a plan shop website. We give it a name, we pick the sections we want to include on our homepage, pick extra pages we might need, colors, fonts, and even a conversational style that the AI of your website is going to fill in for us. We can also add some extra stuff of our own as well, of course. Let's ask Squarespace AI to write a short section on propagating houseplants. It gives us back a lovely little blurb, and with a few more tweaks, we can change the image next to it to make it fit with our houseplant theme. How easy was that? If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for yourself or perhaps you're setting up a webshop like mine, head to squarespace.com for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Allen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And back to the video. Right, next plant or plants, plural actually, I should say. So a little update on, oh, I've got a little bit of string on this. Two seconds, guys. I told you guys a while ago, if you've followed me long enough, you know that I have so much Gloriosum here. It's dwindled right down now. I think the only real Gloriosum I have are odd boards like this or sort of reverted Gloriosum from my variegated Gloriosum. Other than that, I don't keep it anymore. I've got rid of a lot of it in rescue boxes and stuff like that. Like, it's, it's all mainly gone. But I have kept back the odd thing. So I just wanted to give you an update on two of them. As I'm looking off camera, I can see a one all the way to the side of the shop that's looking very plump and beautiful. But it just looks borderline the same as the first one I'm going to hold up. So I'm not going to bother doing that. The first one I want to hold up is this one. If anybody doesn't know, I've been picking out Gloriosum in my shop to see if I can identify a dark form. Because honestly, I'm kind of struggling a little bit. Because if I feed my Gloriosum, they do tend to go quite dark anyway. So I'm a little bit 
I don't know. I'm a little bit confused. Now, there was a time where there was definitely sort of Gloria Osman in the shop that were darker, and I've identified them in the past, but obviously I sold them. So I have no proof now <laughs> as to what's dark and what's not. So I'm basically just trying to find out what that is. This, to me, I don't know if it looks dark on camera. I'll hide my face. But I find that quite dark. Obviously, this is a new leaf coming out, so we can sort of ignore that for now. But all these leaves here I found to be quite dark. It doesn't look too round, this one. It is a little bit rounded, but it's not too rounded. Because obviously you can get a round form as well if you didn't know. There's so many different forms of Gloriosum. There's probably four or five different forms. I mean, depending on where they grow, there could be so many more forms. But in terms of the forms we mainly know, there's a regular form with muted veining. I have plenty of that. There is a round form, definitely, that I have up there. It's kind of half dead, but I have one up there. I have another Gloriosum that I repotted. What's he doing? He's been staked up. He's not doing a whole lot. He's up there in a big bush. But anyway, I have this one, but also the cool one that I pulled back a while ago is this guy. So there's two in the pot here, right? This one is seemingly, seemingly quite normal. He is behaving differently, mind. I will, I will say that. Look at this leaf here. Bear in mind, that's Gloriosum. I think that's really cool. But the one I really want to show you, and it's a couple of plants have been doing this, it's sort of pushing out like a secondary white vein. It almost looks a bit silvery, a bit frosty sometimes. I've shown some of these on camera in the past. It was a long time ago. But I want to show you this. They're just coming through now. There we go. I really can't get any closer to the camera, guys. You see what I mean? There's just kind of like secondary veins in it. And it's all just a little bit odd. So I have, again, I have these two. There's there's probably not a lot more in the shop that I've separated. There might be like two more maximum. And after that, they just kind of are what they are. I think I have, I have another tray of them somewhere. Oh, there's one right up there at the top. And they look very pink. There is also a Gloriosum with pink backing and stuff like that. Um, I don't know whether you could argue these ones are. That's quite pink on the back. If I show you that. I don't know. I know there are charts out there and stuff like that on Google about the Gloriosum forms, but previously I've seen those charts and I've kind of disagreed with it a little bit, just in terms of, I can't remember what it was, but a certain form has like a round petiole. Some of the forms have like a D-shaped petiole. This one is D-shaped. This one is, I can't tell, D-shaped as well. So these are both D-shaped, um, but I've I've just found some inconsistencies in line with those little charts, like the botanical kind of diagrams people make. So I've sort of been just sort of finding out for myself. But that's the progression on them. A little bit slower than what I'd like. However, I have kind of filed them away in a shady spot. So just wanted to show you them because they are very cute. And I will be keeping them. I do quite like them. And I think the thing with Gloriosum is, sorry, let me just wipe this table while I'm talking to you. The thing with Gloriosum is they're quite affordable now. I think you can get the white vein form sold in shops. I think more often than not, it seems to be the regular form with the muted veining. You can get a nicer form than that. And no doubt it's very affordable. So if you're into your Gloriosum and you didn't know there was different forms, which I presume you do, because I think you'd have to be living under a rock at this point to not know that. But there are different forms if you're interested. So have a little Google. Still have a look at the chart that I found. I'm just saying that I've got a little bit of, there's a little bit of discrepancy, I think, between some of the types. But anyway, moving on from Gloriosum. Um, let's do, let's do this one. I have here, I'm about to show you two begonias, one after the other. The first begonia, I can't remember what it's called. It's something like, and I'm prepared to be completely wrong, it's something like Ginny Galaxy or something like that. I don't know if that means it's a Ginny that's variegated. I don't know. Can you tell I'm not into my begonia? I'm not into my begonia. Let me pick it up because I bought it as a tiny begonia and no doubt I've put it on camera at some given point a long time ago, but I've just sort of let it grow really, and left it because I don't know what I'm doing. So what you will see is pretty much all this side of the begonia is, I would class it as reverted, but over here, not the case. You should hopefully say on camera there is a color change on this side of the begonia, and that is because all of that is very good, and I really hope it does not want to find my face. I can already see the camera is struggling today, it really is. I should probably change the setting on it. But all the way on this side, there's some really beautiful variegated leaves. Now, the question I want to ask you guys that are into begonia, sorry, I'm still wiping my table, is how do I go about, obviously not potting it, I know how to pot a plant, but how do I go about letting it grow? Because I know that begonia kind of, they're almost tree-like sometimes when they get going. I don't really know how, like, if I put this in a pot, what I should do with it. Do I, like, stake it up? Do I try and grow it upwards? Like, what? what is the vibe? My question's really less so for this one, because I, I think this is quite a desirable one. Personally, I, I don't get why. But my question's for the next one, because I really like him, and 
I might just keep him. He's got so big. I Honestly, he's got so big. But there he is again anyway. I think it's something like Ginny Galaxy. If I've got the name wrong, I do apologize. There you go. That's what he looks like. He's quite a big lad, really. He keeps popping as well. But the main variegated parts are definitely over here. So let me know what you think of that. Oh, there's such a cute variegated leaf there. Oh my God, there's loads. Yeah, it's this, it's this branch here that's got it. All the other branches, I think, are just straight up green. So I guess if I just wanted to keep one, then you keep that one. And I think the variegation on it, because it's not super bright, it's not dying off. I, I'm guessing it's the same thing as like Montserrat where there's layers of it. But it's not dying, it's fine, even though those light patches there, quite a lot of it is variegated. So I'm a bit like, what is it? How does it work? So if you want to give me any advice on that, please do in the comments. I would love to know. Guys, I know nothing about begonia. When it comes to begonia, I may as well be a person that's never owned a plant. Okay, I don't know anything about them. I've I've done a rare plant index so long ago, and it's literally I got I got shit for that because I did a rare plant index. And I didn't like any of the plants, but that just tells you what my experience with begonia is. Anyway, I put this down and I'll pick up a second one. Which if you watch my channel long enough, you'll know what it is I'm going to pick up. But <gasps> the sun. Honestly, let me just pick it up because it just seems to get bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where it is actually going to take over Lancashire at this point, which is where I kind of live, by the way. What on earth? What on earth is this? Honestly, it's absolutely amazing. I didn't realise Begonia could grow this big. And luckily, I think at one given point, I held it up on camera not that long ago and said, oh, the leaves are coming off uh, because I had underwatered it, basically. And there was buds coming through. And I think I said, like, do I just... Do I just leave it? Will the buds be all right? And they've started pushing through and I've got loads of new leaves now and I'm so happy about it. If you look at this, can you see where all the buds have come through? So that is literally the best I can hold it up. Can't do any better than that. Look at that. The color on that, by the way, is amazing. But can we just appreciate, <laughs> seriously, let me get my hair out of the way. Can we just appreciate the actual size of this bit? because she's massive. She's awesome. She's obviously grown extra because when I bought her, she was just one little vine. This is really pretty. And I think it's because it's got so big, I'm now in love with it. But the advice I want to ask, again, is the same. If I pop this up, what the hell do I do? Because obviously she's growing like this. She's had a bit of support because she's sat, this is sat in a, you know, one of these plastic trays and the tray's sort of done that. So she's had some support. But what, what do I do? <laughs> what do I do? Because it's so big and beautiful and I think it would look excellent in the house. I want to try it. Now, this could kill it. I appreciate it. But I really, really, really want to try it. It doesn't have the best roots, to be fair. Uh, it doesn't seem to give a shit, though. Maybe begonia are just one of these plants that don't need a lot of root. I don't know. Please let me know what the hell I do with it, and we will make a video of me repotting it, because I do not know how to go about it, and I'd rather ask you guys and get the advice before I do it. But once again, literally, look at it. Look at it. That's my torso. That's my head. That's my head. And look at it. It's beautiful. And I, I, I never knew how to feel about it at first, but I think the, the bigger it got and the more plush it got, the more I was like, okay, I kind of like this. Like, if it was a little pathetic plant, I might not like it so much. And I, you know what? I say it's pink. I don't know what color it's coming off on camera, but it's more of a... It's closer to a purple, I think. I wouldn't say... It's not like Oxalis um, purple, but it is more purpley for sure. But let me know. Please, 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 please give me the advice. Because I like it. And I'd like it to look cute, but I need to know what to do. Because I haven't even seen Begonia really on Instagram because I don't follow the hashtags because I generally don't like Begonia. So literally coming in fresh. Coming in fresh, guys. Right, I'll pop her down so gently. Oh my God, so gently. She's literally taken over the big um, plastic thing that I have to keep all the plants in for the updates. Literally. Right, I'm not going to wipe this table down again because it's a bit ridiculous. And I might just pick up this one next to me because why not? It's not really for an update. It is more for the frame that you can barely see because I'm framed out for some of, some other video basically after this one. So I've just sort of zoomed you in. So I'm just going to pick this one up because he's here. And that is another mint monstera. So we have these leaves here. Very nice. Can you see? Like that. Oh, he's tipping. He's tipping. And he has a new leaf that I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do my best to show you. Can you see that? I shouldn't have done this in front of a table. Hang on, I'm going to lean on the table. Hopefully there, I respect there's not wanting to focus on me, but hopefully you can see the variegation coming through. He's very, very stable. But the thing that gets me is, let me pop him back down, because he's, he's very cute. I picked this one 
<laughs> for myself. Okay, this is the one you've seen me potting, pulling, whatever. And he's fine, he's fine. But he's a little bit low on the variegation front, which annoys me because this one was so good. This one was so good. I mean, look at it, look at it. In fact, if anything, that's a lot. And it just shows you, I suppose, the chaos of variegation and how things can go for you. And although if you buy a one leafer, you can have a good indicator of what's going to happen, but you're never going to fully know. Do you know what I mean? So this has happened not buzzing, not buzzing at all. I'm just going to keep going with it a little bit longer, but I guess what I'm alluding to is I might swap them. If this one just keeps giving me shit, I will bring it back to the shop, although it's living here at the moment. I will use it for propagations and I will take a better specimen for me that seems to be more stable. Because when I take a specimen home, I don't want to cut it. I don't want to cut it. I just want it to sort of be variegated all the way up. And it's not even like I need a high level of variegation. I've said this before. I'll take anything. Like that is a little bit too much. It is. This is kind of okay. I'd like a little bit more. Um, that's probably not enough. This is very, very low. The Petio, before you ask, does look okay. But I think what it's going to do is it's going to throw out more here, less here, more here, less here. So I'll keep an eye on it, but I'm not thrilled. I'm not thrilled of this news. You know what I'm saying? Right. Last thing I want to update you on. I used to hold this up all the time on camera and I honestly think people are getting sick of it. So I put it down for a while. I'm going to hold it back up. It's not had the growth I expected, but it has had a lot of growth. And that's probably because, quite honestly, I'm feeding it with Nurture System. And although it works on loads of different plants, I've said this before, for example, that Begonia has had Nurture System and look what happened to it. All of these plants in here are fed with Nurture System now. Nurture System number one, I should say, Power Grow. Sorry, I'm, I keep calling it Nurture System because I used to just have one product out. But now I'm having to adjust and call things like number one, number two, number three. And I haven't adjusted yet. So anyway, so they've all been fed with that. But this one, for some reason, just doesn't do as well. And it's weird because I have a Strelitzi down here that I can't pick up for you, my big dark one, that's gone super big and paddly. But this one has not. I want to show you what it's done. It's still cool, don't get me wrong. I think it might have popped. I'm not sure. Let me just put it here. I will hold it up. Let me just see if there's pops. Yes, there is. There's a pop there for sure. Uh, is it just one pop? There might just be one pop. So if I hold this up, I will spin it round. On this side of the plant here, I think that's a separate plant technically. But if you look at what's happened to it, if I tilt it, how much feeds in here? Oh, a lot. I can't tilt it that much, guys. Sorry. If I tilt it for you there, it's quite... It's weird, it's bushy, but it's not super big and paddly. And don't get me wrong, that could actually just be the type of spathofilm it is. Because I actually don't know what it is as a whole. I just know it to be like spathofilm ghost or whatever. So it could be the type of spathofilm it is. Maybe it is. This one's very, very frilly on the edges. So maybe it just grows like that. Maybe if you've got one at home, tell me if it should be like big and paddly and more what we know from a spathofilum, or it should be more like this. But I want to show you because the variegation, variegation, ghostiness is, is really gone full pop at the minute. And I'm getting the most wonderful, I don't know if you can see this or not, the most wonderful stuff happen. Can you see that? Look at that. Oh, I just tilt it. It's such a beautiful color, guys. I really want to take it to my house. I'm just, I'm a little bit unsure with the cats, which, I mean, it is what it is, but I have taken loads of aroids back and I've not had any problems with the cats. I've actually taken a huge, large form monstera back to the house and they do chew it. They do chew it and it's pissed me right off because it looks terrible on the bottom of the plant. But it's not made them ill or anything. And funny enough, they've not even stopped chewing it. It's very annoying. But I can't remember if I read on the internet that spathofilum specifically were like super, super toxic. I need to check that. So that plant won't go anywhere until I, I know that. But I basically want to show you because it, it's looking really hot. It's not quite what I expected from the growth. Now that is either due to the spathofilum it is or it's due to my feed. But the other spathofilum looks cracking. It looks really good. So let me know what you think. I do have other spathofilum that I think are the same as that one. Um, and they are growing big and paddly. So maybe it is this one. I don't know if you've got, if you've got one of these from me or for any, from anybody else, tell me how yours is doing. Or if you'd like to tag me on Instagram so I can actually have a look at how yours is growing. Cause if it looks a bit like this, minus the, the pops sort of thing, then I'll just kind of be like, okay. Having said that, it's also flowered. I'm looking at a flower now. That could also be a reason as to why that's occurring. The flower's not even opened yet. Oh, it's so nice though. I love these plants. It's such a nice, very, very, very tough addition to your house if you have like, say you have like a plant display and you need a plant, but you're putting it like around the bottom of a display. So you need something like bushy. Honestly, honestly, amazing plants. They're so tough as well. Oh my God. I absolutely love these. I only have a couple left actually at the moment. I've got one small one left. It's smaller than the ones I typically sell. So I'm waiting a bit. And then I have a couple of sort of butt cuts that I took. If I ever repot this, obviously I would be taking that little baby out and I'd be selling that. But other than that, he's just, he's just mint. 
He's so cute. Look at him. One last look. I hope he comes off in camera in all of his glory because he does look really good. So I will pop him down like this because this is quite a cute little part of the frame. And I will say goodbye for this video because that is my updates. Merch, again, is in the description if you wish. My products are in the description if you wish. Everything is available on Amazon. It is UK only, except from three and four that are delayed. That would be Rapid Recovery and CalMag if you need it. Some people do, some people don't. And it's all available, three and four available on the Nurture System website. So if you're in the UK and you really want three or four, you can go there and get it. Otherwise, we'll just have to wait. I'm trying to sort out whatever the problem is with Amazon, but it's just going to be a bit delayed. And we're still waiting on number seven. It is imminent. It is probably arriving within seven days. Then it just needs packaged up correctly and dispatched. Uh, and that's that. So anyway, thank you very much for watching this video, guys. I will love you and leave you. Please leave me any advice on Begonia in the description. I will definitely be waiting for it. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.